So we're going to finish off today by talking about the normal distribution. So what is it? Um, what does it mean for something to be normally distributed? It means that the data is, you know, has a fixed mean and it follows a bell curve shape, right? So it's a special type of continuous probability, right? It's the most, you know, common type of continuous probability that you will see and you've probably seen in your day to day. It's it's these sorts of shapes, right? Where like the, the center is is the mean, okay? Um, and ooh, it's generally given a sort of, you know, like with binomial, you know how we write it with bi. In this case, we write x is distributed with n for normal of mu comma sigma squared or variance, right? Like so. Um, the actual equation for a normal distribution is this, and you will never use this, right? You can maybe have a go chucking it into your calculator. Um, maybe like, you know, for, 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 for fun, maybe throw in like mu is equal to um, one, sigma is equal to one, or mu is equal to zero, sigma is equal to one. That's your standard normal distribution. Um, and maybe, you know, doing it from, like integrating it from, you know, um, zero to one, see what you get. Um, your calculator might chug for a while, um, but it should spit out a nice value. Um, but yeah, you'll, you'll never use that, so don't, don't worry about that too much. Um, like I said, it follows this really um, special bell-shaped curve. And what's really nice about this, um, so this one here is your, your standard sort of normal distribution. You can see that its mean is centered at zero, so mu is equal to zero, right? Um, and here, this is just the probability, right? You don't need to worry too much about the y-axis. Oh, frequency, sorry, not probability. You don't need to worry too much about the y-axis in continuous functions. Really, what's important is the area under the curve, okay? So we can see here, here we have standard deviations, right? And each standard deviation captures a certain amount of percentage of the curve, right? So this is something you need to know, right? Um, so with normal distributions, one standard deviation is always going to capture 68% of the curve, right? So one SD, is 68%, right? Two standard deviations is going to cover 95%, and three standard deviations is going to cover 99.7%. So it's totally by, like, you know, it's totally reasonable for them to ask you um, to, to use these values to approximate things on a normal distribution. So you should know this. Um, know that standard deviation can either go up or down. So from zero to one, right, it captures 34%. And then from negative one to zero, it captures another 34%, which is where you get your 68 from. Same with the 95 and same with the 99.7. Um, so let's try to explain this bell curve, right? So the probability, like I said earlier with continuous probability functions, is found by the area under a graph over some interval, right? Um, so again, we use that you know same formula like we sort of talked about earlier, right? But since that function for a normal distribution is so complicated, it's just done using a calculator function. So you will have a normal PDF function um, that you can use to do this. Um, with the bell curve, most of your data lies around that mean, right? Like you can see within just one standard deviation, you already capture 68%, right? Within two, you already capture 95%. So a lot of your data is centered around the mean, right? So the further you go out, you can see in these like small pockets here, you've only got 0.15%, right? Um, so tiny, tiny bits, right? So the further you go out, the less data you have. And so each line, right, represents in, in this plot, right, um, represents a standard deviation from the mean. So at the mean, you can see it says zero standard deviations from the mean. At one, it's plus one from the mean. At two, it's plus two from the mean, right? Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, sort of already covered this, so I'm gonna skip over that. So the, it's known as a 68, 98.95, 99.7% rule. And yeah, you do need to know this. So let's have a crack at this. So if the age of students in a particular awesomely spectacular methods lecture, maybe this one, um, was normally distributed with a mean of 17 and a standard deviation of 0.3, over what range do we expect 68% of the students to lie? Um, well, so we have a distribution, normal distribution, right? Which is what they've said, normally distributed here. Um, so mean, we said was 17, and standard de deviation 
is 0.3. So here again, that represents a variance. So that's just sigma squared. So you can just write 0.3 squared. So using our rule, right, 68% of our data lies between one, it lies within the one standard deviation of the mean, right? And so all you have to do is 17 minus 0.3 and 17 plus 0.3. So your data is going to be between 16.7 and your ages are going to be with 68% lies is between 16.7 and 17.3 years old. Okay, so I've mentioned the standard normal before or the standard normal distribution. I said it has a mu of zero, so mean of zero, standard deviation of one, right? So we usually represent it with a Z instead of an X. Right, just so we don't get confused. So Z always generally represents the standard normal um, curve. Right, so it's got a mu of one, uh, I mean mu of zero, it has a sigma squared or variance of one and a standard deviation um, of one. Sorry, so scribble that, standard deviation of one. Okay, so we can get any normal, the, the really neat part about a normal distribution is that we can get any normal distribution and move it to a standard normal distribution. How do we do that? We do we use this equation, right? So any normal variable or standard normal variable is equal to a you know the normal variable minus the mean of that normal variable. So these means and standard deviations are different from zero and one, right? So it'll be whatever it is for the, the distribution. So the standardized value tells us the number of standardized standard deviations, the x value lies from the mean. Right, so this can be particularly useful for using that 68, 99.7 rule, right? So um, Avika claims that the VC scores are calculated this way, though I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, I mean, it's it's likely that it is, they, they, what they do is they do try to put it on a normal distribution. So you have study scores um, represented that way with the, with the mean 30. Um, but I'm not 100% sure, I'm not an expert on how they do that. Um, let's go through an example using this formula. So let's say we have a you know the same sort of distribution as before, median uh, I mean uh, mean of seventeen with a um, variance of 0.3 squared. So how many standard deviations of the mean from the mean is the age seventeen point six? Okay, so let's try work that out. So we just chuck that into our equation. So seventeen point six minus seventeen divided by 0.3. Um, that's just equal to so 17.6 minus 17 is equal to 0 0.6. 0 0.6 by 0 0.3 is just equal to 2. And if we try work that out with 16.7 as well, we'll see that we get negative 1, right? But that still, that just means we've gone, instead of going above the mean, we've just gone below the mean, right? So at the end of the day, that's still one standard deviation away from the mean, okay? And now they want us to approximate this. They want us to approximate 16.7, um, you know, the, the probability of the age is 16.7 to 17.6. <coughs> so how do we do that? So first, oh, I'm going to work out um, this, and that tells me the probability that it's one standard deviation below, right? So if I go back to, uh, ooh, sorry. Um, yeah, so if we go back to, I might go one more back to the bigger image. Um, sorry about that. So if we go back um, to this one, right, we can see that one standard deviation is um, 68. And so I've gone here, right? So I've gone here. And now I want to go to here, right? So that's what we're doing. That's the calculation more or less, right? So I've gone, the probability captured here is 0.68 divided by two. And what's captured in here is going to be 0.34 plus 13.135, right? Which is more or less what we've done um, when we go to our question. Um, sorry about going so far back. I just thought it'd be good to show the image. Um, so that's where that comes from. And this is also where this comes from. It's just like you know, calculating the upper half of that. And so when we sum them together, we get the probability is equal to 0 0.815. Um, just to continue with the example, this is, yeah, this is just what I just showed. Um, so all we're doing is we're working out this, right, which is just equal to 0 0.68 by two. 
And then we're also working what this is, which is just equal to 0.95 by 2. Um, so this rule is approximate, right? So, you know, it's not exactly 68%, but it's it's good enough, right, for that um, determination. But, you know, for exam one, that's good enough because they only want approximates. But, you know, to, to work, actually work out your exact values, you're going to have to use your calculator. And like I said earlier, you, you want to be using the normal CDF and not the PDF, um, just this, this CDF function. Um, so let's have a crack at this question here. So find the exact percentage of the amount of data that lies within one standard deviation of the mean. So we just enter our values on the CAS. You can actually TI inspire anyways. You can just type in norm CDF, or you can also find it under menu probability. And so you just enter the various variables like this, right? Um, so this is your lower and upper bound. So this is your lower bound, and this is your upper bound. And here, this is your mean, and this is your standard deviation. So when you do that, this is the, the exact value. Um, it's about 68%. But you know this is good enough. Um, all right, let's have a, do, a crack at this one here as well. Um, so the height of a giraffe is normally distributed with a mean of 4.3 meters and a variance of 0.05. Find the probability that the height is greater than 5.4.5. Um, Again, I'd like to write out my variables, and the lower bound right is so it's just greater than 4.5. The upper bound is infinity, so you can just enter that in to your calculator, and you get 0.186. Um, now this one here is conditional, right? So the probability of the height of a giraffe is greater than 4.5 given that it's 4.2, right? So that um, numerator is the probability of x is greater than 4.5 intersecting with the probability that x is greater than 4.2, right? And the intersection between these two regions, right, is probability of x is greater than 4.5 which is why that's only present in the numerator. So entering that into our calculator, we'll get this. Okay, so Toby is delivering seven giraffes to the Melbourne Zoo. What is the probability that less than four giraffes, oh, that, that less than four of his giraffes are less than 4.35 meters tall? So again, we just create our variable. So the probability that X is less than 4.35 um, is what we will work out. So lower bound negative infinity, upper bound 4.35. So we answer our all in, we get 0.588. Now that's not the entire question, right? We want less than four drafts, right, out of seven. So now we can do a success failure sort of definition. So now we're applying a binomial distribution to a normal distribution. Um, and so, you know, we can use this as our fixed probability, sub it in, use a binomial distribution. Again, I'm now I'm gonna be using um, binomial CDF. And there we go. All right, um, let's talk a bit about the inverse normal. So the inverse normal is, you know, the inverse of a normal CDF, right? So whereas the normal CDF gives us, you know, the probability, um, the inverse normal gives us the upper bound, assuming that we're taking a negative, you know, the lower bound is negative. So it always finds the areas left to a value, okay? So the total time people spend scrolling Netflix is normally distributed with a mean of 120 hours and standard deviation of 10 hours. Um, and so again, I always like to write out my variable like this. Um, it is found out that 10% of people have wasted their life. So this is point one. A person has wasted their life if they spend more than A hours scrolling Netflix. Find A. So we can use probability of X is greater than A. Um, is equal to 0.1. So we need to change it so that it's on the left, right? So X is less than A, we're using that complement rule, I'm just doing one minus 0.1, which gives me 0.9. And then I can chuck that into my calculator. So inverse norm is a function under probability as well. And that gives you 132.86. Um, and in some cases, we're not given, you know, standard deviation or the mean. However, we can determine these using a normal inverse function, right? or inverse normal. So we've got um, from earlier, z is equal to x minus mu over sigma. And so what we can do is we can standardize functions. So that means, you know, even though it's like some different normal distribution, we can bring it back to the standard normal distribution using this equation here, right? Which, you know, is z n zero one. 
So here's an example. So x is normally distributed with a mean mu and a standard deviation sigma. It is known that 35% of the data lies under x is equal to 6, and 45% lies above x is equal to 10. And now they want us to find mu and sigma. So I'll let you guys have a crack um, and you know while we work it out. So the probability that x is less than 6 is equal to 0.35, which is given in the question. Probability of x is greater than 10 um, is equal to 0.45, which is also given in the question. So I can use my um, z is equal to x minus mu over sigma from earlier to sort of standardize it to the standard normal distribution, right? Then I can use inverse normal because the the, the area known um, under the standard normal distribution is like a known quantity. So inverse normal can handle it reasonably well. Um, and so I work out what the area is, sub that into my, um, so I work out what Z is more or less, right? And then from there, I can use simultaneous equations to solve for mu and sigma. Um, here's a couple of exam questions that I won't go through just for the sake of time, but you guys are more than, you know, the, the solutions are there and it's always a good idea to have a go through those. Um, so that brings us to the end of today. So in summary, we sort of just covered, um, you know, a, a brief understanding of integration and we went into a lot about probability. Now, I would want to, I would like to remind everyone that that's not, you know, everything. What is, you know, method, what, at the end of the day, methods is primarily about um, the, the problem solving. So although the content is all covered here, um, it is really important to go ahead and practice these con concepts um, and try to get your hands on any sorts of questions you guys can. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed today. Um, if you have any questions, chuck them in chat, I'm more than happy to answer them. Um, and, you know, if I maybe miss your question or you, you're watching a recording um, or like recording after this session has like, you know, aired, um, feel free to shoot me an email from the email at the start. So it's just aj at tutesmart.com and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today and I'll um, good luck with your um, rest of methods three and four. But yeah, hey.